Uh, Professor Sorry. John Holden, who's Demos Associate, visiting professor at City University. Professor Robert Hewison is Demos Associate and visiting professor at Lancaster University. A, a, they are already a famous double act in the sector. I don't know whether you're kind of little and large, more common wise. Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Tweedledum and Tweedledee. Tweedledum. Okay, over to you. Exactly, yes. Well, um, we called our provocation turbulent times, but as Jenny has already used that phrase, in fact, we took that idea that these are turbulent times for the heritage from Jenny Abramsky's uh, uh, writings. We took as our cue her warning that the current situation, and here I quote, must mean a fundamental redesign of some heritage services and activities. Well, since she wrote those words, the situation has become even more turbulent. The state is conducting a steady withdrawal from support of the public realm. It's abolished quangos, deregulated systems of protection, and of course imposed massive financial cuts in the cultural and environmental sectors. 50% at Natural England, 36% at Arts Council England by 2015-16. The local authorities that are fundamental to all forms of heritage protection are facing the prospect of being unable to carry out any non-statutory duties. Not just local authority, but all forms of museums, including nationals, are suffering financial attrition. Certain institutional changes are in prospect that will alter the heritage landscape and increase competition for such funds as are available, principally those from the National Lottery. And the recession has put pressure on the earning capacities of heritage attractions, while at the same time, the demand for economic growth is a threat to conservation of both the built and the natural environment. When we looked at how the heritage sector was preparing to respond to these challenges, we were unable to find any coherent strategy. There's no doubt that the heritage is valued by the public, but the heritage does not appear to value itself. The heritage does not see itself as a coherent sector, let alone as a single organic system where heritage becomes defined by people rather than delivered to them. Everyone in this country, every day, comes into contact, formally or informally, with aspects of the heritage. Institutionally, however, it is represented by a heterogeneous mix of government departments, local authorities, non-departmental public bodies, charities great and small, and a dense hinterland of professional experts and enthusiastic volunteers. We have observed within this system institutional rivalries and professional silos. Now, exponents of the importance of intangible heritage, museum professionals, country house owners, archaeologists, and architectural historians will, of course, all have different viewpoints. But the most damaging fault line that we detected was between what one might call cultural heritage, including museums and the historic environment, and on the other, the natural heritage, including species, flora, and all types of landscape. Now, this division is institutionally reinforced by the different responsibilities and approaches of the DCMS and DEFRA and their agencies, respectively English Heritage and the HLF, Natural England and the Environment Agency. Each of the four home countries have different variations in the distribution of agencies, and only the HLF has a UK-wide remit. It's also the case that legislation and some of the economic aspects of the natural heritage are a European matter, while cultural heritage is a matter for the home countries. Senior people on both sides of the cultural-natural divide confirmed to us that these institutional differences are part of a less readily acknowledged differences of mindsets and languages. Even words such as conservation and environment means it, it appears different things to different people. The results of the consultation on the National Heritage Protection Plan reveal a failure to achieve a common understanding or sense of partnership across the sector.
But there are, at the same time, welcome convergences and crossovers, both practical and intellectual. But they could go much further. All aspects of the heritage system need to find a common language in which to make a common case for the cultural and natural environment that will further strengthen its legitimacy with the public and so put pressure on politicians and government. This is not a call for homogeneity, still less for uniformity, but it is a call for the recognition that common values are more important than obvious differences. Finding a common language in a common cause is the key, but there is also an opportunity for the redesign of which Jenny Abramsky spoke. The logical conclusion of our argument involves a more radical configuration of the system than the current plans to divide English heritage into a policy and funding body and uh, to be called Historic England and an independent charity responsible for the National Heritage Collection. Now, we explore the possible negative implications of this plan in our paper, especially for the Heritage Lottery Fund, which may end up as the funder of first and last resort, with pressure building to breach the additionality principle governing the use of lottery money, just as Arts Council England has recently done. But at the same time, it is also an opportunity. Why not create a single policy and funding agency that brings together both the natural and cultural heritage by merging natural England with the projected historic England and giving it the responsibilities for museums that are currently with the Arts Council. This agency would care for the historic environment, including intangible and heritage and museum policy, as defined in the national planning policy framework of 2012. The HLF would retain its UK-wide responsibilities. And to avert the looming crisis at local authority level, heritage protection and museum provision would become a statutory requirement properly backed by central government support. We appreciate that these are radical suggestions, but our challenge is this. What would you do instead? So long as the heritage sector remains divided against itself, it will continue to be a weak candidate for government attention, and it will not attract the public support that is crucial if it is to be able to make its case to government and to support itself. That case needs to be made in a common language, one that demonstrates that the heritage, in all its rich and diverse forms, is a constituent part of the public realm. The public realm, that is, as both the natural and built environment, and the social and imaginative space where ideas, values, and shared memories can be freely debated and celebrated. The public realm is the place where people find a common purpose. The heritage sector has a common responsibility to ensure that the public realm does not deteriorate any further. Thank you.